Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be live streaming this tutorial as well. Uh, we're going to be going over this kind of grass cube effect that I've created. Um, a lot of you guys have been seeing that my recent tutorials have been covering fur, hair, whatever you want to call it with the hair particle system that Blender has built in. Um, and I just think this looks really cool. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I created this, kind of go over all the settings. Uh, we're going to create this completely from scratch. We'll probably just make a slight variation of this. It won't be exactly like this. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into a new document here. So new general document. Go ahead and delete that light source there. Snap to your camera and just give this a quick save. I'm just going to call this Moss Cube Tutorial. Go ahead and save. All right, now go ahead and click on your cube. Uh, tab into edit mode. Give it a couple of subdivisions. Whoa couple of subdivisions here that should be fine right there and then go ahead and click on object quick effects cell fracture and if you don't see cell fracture there it is an add-on in blender it's free all right guys so go ahead and click on your cube object quick effects cell fracture now before you do this make sure you have subdivided your cube quite a few times this seems to be a good amount here I think that was like three or four times there Go ahead and click on quick effects, cell fracture, and you can just leave these settings on their defaults right here. If you want to copy those real quick, I'll leave them up for a moment. Press OK. And as you can see, our cube gets split up into a bunch of pieces here. Now your original cube, I'm just going to go ahead and move that down here, and I'm just going to delete that. Um, and now as you can see, we have all these little pieces, which is fantastic. Go ahead and click on, uh, sorry, highlight all of them right there. Go up this little button right here and click on individual origins and then just scale them down just a little bit. Something like that should be pretty much perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch that back to bounding box center. Um, and what we just did there is we basically just took all of the individual origin points and scaled all of these down by their individual origins. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this now. Now, the very next thing that I'm gonna do is start kind of setting up my scene. So I'm gonna just go to rendered view, switch over to cycles. I'm gonna use my GPU. I'm going to add in an environment texture, which is what I did for the previous project. And I believe I used this one right here. Now this is a sunrise um, HDRI. It looks really nice. So we're going to be using this. I'm also going to go to my top down view, click on my camera and move it completely to the other side and rotate it around so that we're facing the cube from the back side. So we have this really nice lighting effect from the back. I'm also going to change my project dimensions to be square. You guys can choose any dimensions you want. And I'm going to kind of rotate my camera up like this. I'm going to push myself back in the scene a little bit. And we're just going to kind of center our object there. And everything looks really, really good right now. So the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a mesh. I'm going to add in a sphere. And I'm going to scale it up so that it's right around our camera and our object. I'm going to shade that smooth and I'm going to give it a rough glass shader with a IOR of 1.2. And now if we go ahead and snap to our camera, you can see that as I adjust the, the roughness of the sphere, we can actually blur the background without even using depth of field. Now later we will enable depth of field, but this actual technique is really nice because you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like before you even start. All right, now let's go ahead and click on one of these pieces here and press the period key on your keyboard to kind of zoom in there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and use my particle settings here. I'm going to add a new particle emitter. I'm going to click on hair. And right away, you're going to see a bunch of hair appear here. It's going to look kind of crazy, but don't worry. We're going to clean it up, make it look really nice. For the hair length, I'm going to do 0 0.07, which is what I believe what I did last time. Yep. And then we're going to go ahead and click on children click on interpolated and then we're going to do maybe five for both of those and then raise our number up to 2000 as you can see we have a lot of little hairs there and then I'm going to go to hair shape and then for the diameter root I'm going to do 0.4 you guys can also play with with this setting here and I'm going to go over to the materials tab add a new material and then we're going to click on principled hair okay and as you can see it's already going to inherit that hair add one more material click on new and I'm just going to make this red so you can see it. And as you can see, we now have our object is red and our hair is whatever color we want it to be. In our case, we want it to be like a green, like a darker green color with probably a higher roughness. We can play around with these later and an IOR of maybe like 1.2. Now for the red, I'm probably just going to make that like a dark brown kind of color. And we can come back to that as well later. I'm going to give that a higher roughness. 
so that it's kind of earthy like that. And as you can see, we already have this kind of like moss looking material. So I'm gonna go back to my hair settings. Now we're gonna be copying everything over to all of the different pieces here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on source. Now you can choose vertices for your source or you can choose faces. I found that faces worked best for what I'm doing. Um, and everything else, you should be good to go. So you can increase these. Now, depending on your computer, you may or may not be able to handle what I'm doing right now. Um, I have my children interpolated display amount at eight and my rendered amount at eight as well. So I say that if you wanna do this, you can, or you can turn the, the display amount in your viewport down so that you don't have to deal with all these little particles. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and show you guys a little trick here. So I'm gonna go ahead and holding shift with this selected, I'm gonna highlight everything else. I'm going to go to control L. First, I'm gonna link the materials uh, and we'll, we'll take care of the sphere later. And then I'm gonna link the modifiers. Now, when I link the modifiers, you're gonna see that every single one of these now has fur or hair on it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my outer sphere real quick and I'm gonna give it the, the glass material that it had before snap back to my camera and as you can see we now have this nice shaded like fur look all right now one of the things I'm gonna do that I did in the last project first I'm gonna switch to random coloration so I can really see everything here I'm gonna go ahead and add in a turbulence force field which is under force fields turbulence and as you can see we already even without adjusting the turbulence force field have some crazy physics going on with our fur or hair well, sorry, grass. I'm gonna turn the strength down to 0.4, maybe 0.2. And you'll see we still have some interesting dynamics with this, um, and it looks really good. Now, if you scroll all the way down to your turbulence here, you can also move it around your scene. Let me show you guys in the solid view. You can move it around your scene, and you'll notice how it's gonna affect the actual particles. Now, I'm gonna keep it where it is right now. I'm gonna go back to rendered view. And I wanna add in a little bit more to our scene here. I think I'm gonna add in a light source, another light source, I'm gonna add a point light, and I'm gonna to go to my top down view, move it off to the side, maybe somewhere over here. And then for the power, I'm gonna do 2000. And then I think for the radius, I'm gonna do one. And as you can see, we already have some really, thank you so much for the badge, Trevima.creatives. Guys, go check out his shaders, he has some awesome work. As you can see, as I move my light source around, we get some really interesting effects here. So right now I have a white light source on the bottom right. I'm gonna duplicate that and bring it off to the left, the upper left, and then I'm gonna make this kind of like more of a yellow kind of warm color. And again, I'm gonna go to solid view and kind of just bring it back in the scene a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and see what that looks like. Now this is supposed to be our sunlight, so if you want, you can raise this power up to like 4,000. And as you can see, we already have some really interesting dynamics going on with our lighting. Um, another great thing that you can do is you can actually click on this outer sphere. You can actually make it slightly colored. So let's say you did want the, the background to be like a slightly different color. You can actually do that just by adjusting the color of this sphere. I think I'm gonna go with kind of like a bluish green, maybe something a little bit darker. Maybe even blue might be nice something like that, maybe a little bit lighter. And then of course you can still adjust the roughness as well. So if you want it to be like slightly blurred, you can do something like that. And I think that looks really nice. Again, you guys can choose whatever you like. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my camera, save my project, click on depth of field, go ahead and enable that. And I'm gonna click on one of the first pieces here to focus on, and I'm gonna turn my f-stop way down. Now watch what happens when we do that. Look at how blurred everything gets right now. This is where you can really, really get into the customization of everything. So right now I think I'm gonna try like 0.4. I think that looks really, really nice. So I think I'm gonna go with something like that. Now you're probably wondering how else can we kind of enhance this scene? Well, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go back to solid view here. I'm gonna just hide this from the viewport, which is our outer sphere. I'm gonna click on one of these pieces that looks really interesting and I'm gonna shift D to duplicate it and I'm gonna go ahead and place it in front of the camera. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit, maybe rotate it, bring it up here. And I'm gonna place it really close to the camera so that it's just kind of in the corner here. And I'm gonna go back to rendered view. I'm gonna turn my sphere back on. Now you'll notice like kind of what is happening here. Um, you can see that this is kind of blurred in the foreground here. Now one of the things I think I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to double check this material is applied correctly. Yep, yep, there we go. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and snap back to camera view. And as you can see, we can now put this in the foreground in a way that makes sense for our scene. I'm also gonna click on my camera and I'm going to raise the viewport display outline so we can really narrow in on our scene. Now we can really see kind of like what's happening here. And I think I'm gonna take this, put it right here, maybe rotate it a little bit. I'm gonna duplicate this as well. Scale that down, maybe scale it on the Z. Rotate it some more, maybe put it up here. And I want this to make, I want to make this look like everything is in the foreground. And yeah, something like that looks pretty good. Again, I'm just kind of trying to place these in the foreground to give us a more isolated feel to our scene. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. So that's just a little bit of creativity I'm applying there. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to solid view and I am going to add in a, I think I'm gonna add in an icosphere with maybe like, I don't know, one subdivision. You're gonna get a little box that pops up when you add your icosphere on the bottom left. You just put one subdivision. I'm gonna scale that way down, bring it out here, out here on the outside of our scene, and I'm gonna give it that brown shader. And then I'm gonna snap back to my camera, add in a plane, scale that up a bit, bring it below everything else. And I'm gonna make this a particle emitter, and we're gonna take that little icosphere and make it emit those particles. Go to your particle emitter tab, add a new particle emitter, and then under render, instead of halo, you're going to choose object, and then you're gonna go ahead and find that icosphere in your hierarchy up here, which is right here. And then if you press play, you'll see that there are little icospheres. Now for the scale, I'm gonna go ahead and choose one for a moment. Scale randomness, we'll also choose one. Now watch what happens if we press play. See they're all emitting from this plane, but we want them to go directly up. In order to do that, we're gonna change our gravity settings in our physics settings to 9.8. So we're gonna use a positive number instead of a negative number. So instead of everything going down, it should now go up. And as you can see, everything is emitting upwards. Now at about this point, I'm gonna pause, snap back to my camera, go to a rendered view, and I just wanna see what everything looks like. This looks really cool. I'm gonna click on my plane, and I am going to increase the number to 2000. And then I'm also going to go to my viewport display, I'll, I'll click on show emitter, so or uncheck show emitter so we can't actually see the emitter. We'll give this a second to play and we'll wait till we really like where these little rocks are. Now again, you can use anything you want for this particle emitter. I'm just using these because this was the easiest example to show you guys. And this looks really, really cool. Now another thing you can do is you can click on your camera and you can actually increase the like blurriness. I'm gonna raise this or put, put this down to point two. And as you can see, we already have something that's very, very similar to what I had before. And I think it looks really cool. I'm very happy with this result. Um, yeah, I, I really, really like this. So again, this could be your completed product. It doesn't have to be. You guys can work on this as much as you want. Another thing you can do is now that you have your particle system set up, you can actually change your hair particles here. For example, you could make them longer and it'll apply to every single thing um, that you have that applied to. So all of these have the same hair particle system, so they will all update if you update any of your settings here. Um, keep in mind, the turbulence is ultimately what's going to determine how these little particles are gonna move around. So if you want to, you can go ahead and raise the strength. Right now I'm at point two, I'm gonna go ahead and raise it to point four to show you the difference. And as you can see, you're gonna get a little bit more of a spotty look to your cube. I think it looks nice. I'm gonna think I'm gonna go in between at point three. And I think that looks really, really good. So again, you guys, if you guys were happy with this, you could go ahead, maybe move these objects in just a little bit more, and then take your camera and zoom in just a little bit more on your object. I'm gonna give myself an 85 millimeter lens, and then I'm gonna hold shift and drag that amount back until I'm happy with the result. Now, render settings, let's go ahead and get into the render settings here. I'm gonna do a thousand samples. Actually, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do 250 samples with optics denoising. And then I'm gonna go to my light paths and I'm gonna make everything 20. And then I'm going to go ahead and render this. I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's ready to render. Let's go ahead and hit F12 to render here. And let's give this a moment. Okay, so this is why we do test renders. As you can see, the emitter is showing down here. We don't want the emitter to show. And also, our particles aren't showing. So let's go ahead and figure out what the issue is with that. Well, first of all, let's click on our particles. Go to render tab here. Uncheck show emitter. And then let's go ahead and play this back again. 
Right, let's go ahead and play this back and see what we get. Again, if you guys want to, you can make these instances real. So like right here, if you're really happy with this, you could go to your modifiers, click on this drop down, and you can click, or sorry, click on make instances real. And then they'll basically just freeze in time. Um, and we sh they should render out normally now. Let's go ahead and do a test render. And as you can see, they are rendering out normal. Again, if you guys aren't happy with this particle amount, you can 100% uh, adjust that as needed. So guys, that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, this is, again, a slight variation based on what I did on Instagram. Um, I mess with the settings a lot. I mess with the turbulence, the actual rocks themselves. Um, you can even make these rocks have fur on some side and on other sides, no fur by using the particle edit system. Um, you can also make these more organic by applying a displacement modifier to them if you'd like. Again, it just depends on what your PC can handle and what you guys are willing to do in terms of putting the work in and the time in to make it look the way that you want it. I think this looks really cool. I think the lighting is very powerful here. Um, so there's just a lot that you can do with this. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.